How do I successfully create my own project management spreadsheet template? Are you about to start a new project, but are you uncertain about how to record and manage the project's data? Well, in this short video, I will create a project management spreadsheet template that will allow you to both record and analyze your project's data. Just follow these simple step-by-step -step routines as demonstrated in this tutorial. During the presentation, I will make use of various Excel functions such as naming ranges, incorporating drop-down boxes, using a simple if statement, and employing the subtotal command. The final template can be modified to suit your individual requirements. Now, as usual, you can download this template directly from the mrspreadsheet.com website. Simply follow the link in the description below. All we ask is that you subscribe to our channel and give this video a big thumbs up. I hope you enjoy watching. Okay, let's get started. Open up a new workbook and on sheet one, we will enter in the headings for our master project. So in cell C4, enter in date. In D4, it's trans type. In E4, type in project. F4 becomes section. G4 is quantity. H4 is rate. I4 becomes time cost. J4 is total cost. K4 is markup. And finally, L4 becomes sales value. In cell C2, enter in our title, which is Master Project Cost Schedule and then enter the year 2023 in the merged cells of K2 to L2. And increase the font size of these cells and make bold. Now, I like to work in Excel without the grid lines showing. So, from the Page Layout ribbon, deselect the View Grid Lines box to give our worksheet a clear, neutral background. Now, we will populate the first line of our master project cost schedule. So in cell C5, enter in the date, the 1st of January, 2023. In the next column, we want our transaction type. In our instance, we want to select one of four options. These options are bank payment, card payment, other payment, and hourly rate. Now, it will be very convenient to create a drop-down box in cell D5, enabling us to select one of these options. Excel makes it easy to do this with the data validation tool. So let's quickly create a small table by entering those four options. Go to 05 and enter in bank payment. 06 equals card payment. 07 equals other payment and 08 equals hourly rate. Give this table a heading of trans type. Select the range 05 through to 08 and from the formulas ribbon, choose the define name command. In the dialog box that opens, type in trans type with no spaces into the name box and click OK to save and close. We will now use this named range in our drop-down box. So, with cell D5 active, pick up the data validation tool from the data ribbon, and in the data validation dialog box that opens, select list from the allow field. And in the source field, enter equals trans type. Click OK to save and close. Hopefully, cell D5 now has a drop-down selector to the far right of the cell. Click on the selector and choose Bank Payment.
We can use this exact technique to create drop-down box selectors for both the project field in cell E5 and the section field in cell F5. Firstly, let's create the tables for these. So in cells Q5 through to Q8, enter in our valid options of job A, job B, job C and job D. And in the range S5 through to S8, enter in our valid sections of design, frame, fittings and finish. Give these two tables the heading of project and section in cells Q4 and S4 respectively. Now highlight the range Q5 through to Q8 and from the formulas ribbon select the define name tool and give this the name of project. Select S5 through to S8 and using the same method give this the range name of section. Return to cell E5 and from the data ribbon pick up once again the data validation tool. Choose list from the allow options and enter equals project in the source field. Click OK to save and close. Now go to cell F5 and repeat the process with list in the allow field and equals section in the source field. Save and close the data validation tool. Hopefully you now have drop down box selectors in both E5 and F5. Choose job B in cell E5 and design in cell F5. We will ignore cells G5 through to I5 on this first line of data. Enter the value of 175.89 in cell J5. This represents the values of the payment made. If you are using this project management tool to collect costs for a project that you intend to sell, then we can add a cost markup to each line. Enter 25% formatted as a percentage in cell K5. We can now calculate the sales value in cell L5. The formula is equals plus J5 multiplied by open brackets 1 plus K5 and close the brackets. This formula simply takes the value in cell J5 and multiplies it by 1 plus K5 or 125% to return the sales value of 219.86. That's great! We have now completed our first line of data in our master projects table. We have used both functions or formulae in cells D5, E5, F5 and L5. So let's copy these down to the end of our table. Highlight the range D5 through to F5. Pick up the drag point at the bottom of cell F5 and drag down the range to row 19. The entire section populates with the contents of D5 through to F5. Now select the range D6 through to F19 and hit the delete key. The data now disappears but importantly the drop down box selectors do not. Now select L5 and simply drag the line down to cell L19. The cells L6 to L19 populate correctly with a string of zeros. Now let's enter our second line of data. In cell C6 enter the date of the 2nd of January 2023 and from the drop down box in cell D6 select the hourly rate option. In cell E6 we will choose job D and for the section option choose frame. Enter a quantity of 15 in cell G6 and a rate of 17.50 in cell H6. Our formula for the time cost in cell I6 becomes 
equals if open brackets d6 equals hourly rate in inverted commas comma plus g6 multiplied by h6 comma zero and close the brackets this returns a value of 262.50 and the formula says if the value in d6 is hourly rate then we will return the value of g6 multiplied by the value in h6 if however the value in d6 is not hourly rate then the formula will return a zero the value in cell j6 simply becomes plus the value in i6. We will put a markup percentage of 35% in cell K6 and the sales value of 354.38 should automatically populate. We can now copy these formulas down the rest of the table. So highlight the cells I6 and J6 and copy and drag these down to the end of the table. We would also like to copy these formulas to the cells above. So once again highlight I6 and J6 and drag these up to the first line. Hopefully all of the formulas are correct. Populate the rest of the table as shown on screen. This will thoroughly test out our work. Okay, now let's enter in some totals. Navigate to cell I20 and type in the command equals subtotal open brackets 9 comma and then the range i15 through to i19 and close the brackets in cell j20 the command becomes equals subtotal open brackets 9 comma then the range j5 through to j19 and close the brackets and finally the formula in l20 is equals subtotal open brackets 9 comma the range L5 through to L19 and close the brackets. I'll explain the use of the subtotal command a little later on. In cell K20 we want the average markup so enter in the formula equals open brackets plus L20 divided by J20 close the brackets, minus 1. Now apply some formatting to the header rows. And now with the cursor in any cell within the project management table, click the filter tool from the home ribbon. This filtering routine allows us to truncate our data and analyze values for any one of our headers. For example, click on the downwards pointing arrow next to the header project. This opens up a dialog box, inviting us to select from one of the four projects available. Select Job C. The table now truncates to just display those items that have Project C in them. You will also notice that the totals have changed to reflect again only those values associated with Job C. I will now explain the use of the subtotal command. When you use filtering in Excel, and you need totals to reflect only the truncated values, then you will need to incorporate the subtotal command within your totals formula. Subtotal 9 will use the sum command. Other subtotal options are average, min, max, etc. with each subtotal command using a different numeric value. OK, that's it. We now have a fully functioning project management table which we can use to analyse our costs for any project. Now, it's quite likely that you will need alternative headings to suit your particular needs, but by using the techniques shown, you can easily adapt this table to suit your individual requirements. I do hope you enjoyed watching. We do hope that our spreadsheet presentation was of value to you and that there was lots of useful content. If you would like a copy of this free template, then all we ask is that you subscribe to our channel and give this video a big thumbs up.
Alternatively, you can visit us on one of our channels at either Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. If you enjoyed watching this video presentation, then you might also enjoy watching our How to Keep Your Accounts Using a Spreadsheet video or How to Keep Inventory Using an Excel Spreadsheet. Thank you once again for your attention.